China just dealt a heavy blow to the U.S. military supply chain, and it all hinges on this obscure metal, samarium. In April, Beijing imposed strict new export controls on seven rare earth elements, including a near-total ban on samarium magnets. These aren't just any magnets. They're crucial components in the most advanced American weapons, especially where heat resistance is critical. Think F-35 fighter jets, missile nose cones, and high-performance electric motors used in modern warfare. The problem? China is the world's only producer of samarium at scale. This rare metal has flown under the radar for years, but now it's at the center of a geopolitical standoff. According to the New York Times, U.S. military contractors have already begun to feel the pressure. Supplies are thinning out. Resupply plans for Ukraine, Israel, and even Taiwan are being quietly scaled back. And all of this is unfolding while trade negotiators from the U.S. and China are stuck in tense talks in London. I have to go back to Washington to testify before Congress tomorrow. We have had two days of the productive talks. They are ongoing. My colleagues, Secretary Lechnick and Ambassador Breer, are going to be continuing uh, as needed with the Chinese delegation. Here's why this matters. Samarium magnets are virtually irreplaceable in certain military applications. Lockheed Martin, the maker of the F-35, reportedly uses around 50 pounds of samarium per aircraft. These magnets are what allow high-performance systems to operate under intense thermal stress, something essential in modern aerial and missile warfare. With the new Chinese licensing regime, exporters must identify end users. That makes it easy for Beijing to block any shipment that might benefit Western militaries. While civilian-use magnets are still allowed in limited cases, no licenses for military-grade samarium have been approved so far. This isn't the first time the U.S. has tried to reduce its dependence on Chinese rare earths. The last Western mill refining samarium shut down in France back in 1994. Since then, efforts to revive domestic supply have fallen flat. MP Materials was awarded $35 million to produce samarium in California, but failed to install the necessary equipment. Meanwhile, a larger $351 million grant to Linus Rare Earths in Texas hasn't yet materialized into a functioning facility. Promises have been made, but infrastructure is lagging far behind. This bottleneck could not have come at a worse time. Since Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the escalation in Gaza, Western militaries have been emptying their inventories of precision weapons. Arms shipments to Taiwan have also ramped up, intensifying friction with Beijing. On top of that, U.S. law requires military use magnets to be processed either domestically or by allied nations, not in China. So now, the very rules meant to protect U.S. security have amplified this strategic vulnerability. Previous administrations tried different strategies. Obama turned to the World Trade Organization. Trump imposed tariffs and sanctions. But none succeeded in creating a reliable alternative to China's dominance over rare earths. Chinese licensing regime now operates like a geopolitical switch. One flick and American weapons production grinds to a halt. So while world leaders talk in London, the future of US military readiness may depend on a quiet, silvery metal most Americans have never heard of. That metal is samarium. And right now, it's Beijing's most powerful chip on the table.